Dave. This is DG Overlanding. On this overlanding journey, we're going to the Kruger National Park. It's going to be so great. We're going up the N1, having breakfast at Tukasadar, first of all. On the first day, then we're going to stop off at Silver Mist Resort, which is near Makhubas Kluh. Looks very good on the website, so it'll be interesting to see what it's like. The next day, we're going to be going through the, the Palabora Gate into the Kruger National Park. And there we will be staying at 10 days, rustic campsite. Have to go and check in at Milpani first. After that, we will be staying at Shinguetsi. I booked a site on the um, fence, so that should be good as well. And then from there, we're going to Punda Maria, and we will exit the park at Pufuri Gate right at the top. Never been up there before, so it's going to be good and interesting. <laughs> Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and enjoy the journey with us. Thank you. Hi, in episode one of our Kruger Park overlanding journey, we will be traveling up the N1, having breakfast, staying in the Makhubas Kluf area on the first night, entering the Kruger through the Palabora Gate, staying at Tendez Rusty Campsite, and progressing further north to Shinguetsi. We have had some fantastic experiences, so be sure to also watch episode two, where we progress our journey north, as well as the homeward bound leg of our trip. Be sure to catch our campsite video recordings also on DG Overlanding YouTube channel. Enjoy the journey with us. Thank you. So this is the N1. We're going up north um, towards Bella Bella where we're going to have breakfast. We're just almost at the Pumlani Toll Plaza. Just, we're just going to go through there shortly. Okay. Looks like they still have most of the lanes for coming down after the last long weekend. So we're going to have an e-tag, so we're going to go through the e-tag only booth and hope it, hopefully it opens. There we go. We're going to turn off here now, Bella Bella. Um, we're going to have breakfast at Tukla Sadar. Hopefully it's going to be open, it should be. Alright, there we are, Settlers Bella Bella. We're going to go left. If you turn right here, you can go to Sondela, which is a uh, camping site. Silver Mist. This is just near uh, Makhubas Kluf. It's very nice here. It's a horse breeding farm. They also breed some kind of goat and also some sort of sheep that apparently is special. So, as you can see, living up to its name, Silver Mist all around. This morning, okay. There's some horses going down the road. So, we're here at Silver Mist Resort. Um, you can see behind me the horse paddocks. Some horsey areas over there as well. And down below is a dam down below here somewhere. And there's some tents. Um, I'll take a walk down there now and we can have a look. There's our car parked on the on the hill waiting for reception. Right, Silver Mist Resort. This is the camping area. Um, they have some tents as well that are set up. There is a dam or a river down below here. So these are the dome tents that are set up. We're just waiting for our chalet. We got a little bit early and they won't let us into the chalet as yet as a camping site 
for our place. Ablutions are a little bit rustic, but they seem to be okay. So, Silvermist Resort. I'm not going to do a campsite review here because we're not actually physically staying in a campsite. Although we haven't seen any flies, but still. Some lovely horses. There were a whole lot that went out as we came in. So here's our chalet at Silver Mist. The chalet is actually, in fact, very nice. There's a bra here, if you wanted to bra. And it looks out straight onto um, a dam, which I assume is part of a river. And there's a waterfall somewhere, I can hear it in the bush, somewhere on the other side of the, of the dam. Chalet number three. See, it's got a solar geyser on the top. There's a braai area outside, if you need it to braai as well, together with a, like a weaver kind of braai. And we parked here. There is covered parking on the other side of the chalet, but my trailer's too heavy to fit in there. Uh, too big, sorry, to fit in there. So. Okay, so we're down by the dam. I'm standing on the jetty. It's a bit wobbly, but, uh, yeah, it's okay. Some big chalets around. Early on. Nice. It's really nice. So you can fish here as well. Catch and release. Obviously got some trout in the dam. And that is the road out. So we're on our way now to Kruger National Park. Palabora Gate. It's going to be fantastic. Okay, through the National Park, and this is the Palabora Gate. Just arriving to go and check in at the gate. Uh, where's to park? So here we are, Palabora Gate, Kruger National Park. Just going in, we've just checked done our check-in. Sun's coming out, so it's going to be quite a nice day, I think. So looking forward to this, it should be great. Right, let's get on the road and get set up. Okay, so we're in the Kruger National Park, we just come through the gate. So there's quite a nice looking hill in the distance there. Quite amazing some of the rocks and some of the rockeries around here. Okay, so here's some impala. It's the first impala we've seen in the park so far. We did see a zebra a while ago, but it was too far off to uh, photograph. Yeah, so there are some things alive here. Right, there's an elephant. You can only get a bum view, but might be able to hear it eating. There's some little ones on the other side of the road as well. Very small elephant. Little one's gone off the road, but there are some other ones here. Oh, there's more on the right, and there's some further down the road. Right, so this is quite a good sighting. Turn the car Oh, there's another one coming out. Okay, so there's quite a few elephants here. There's some quite a long way off down there to go a bit closer. Okay, so this is Mopani Rest Camp we're coming up to. We have to come here to check in for 10 days. To turn off to 10 days rustic campsite, just checked in at Mopani. Let's go and see what it's all about.
today's rustic campsites. Okay, we're gonna look for site 31. We're on 31. Right, so we're making some bread tonight. Not bread, mixed with a flour, sorry, yeast. Some salt and pepper. We're gonna put onion flakes in now. And uh, I'm gonna get some cheese. Alright, so we're putting, we're heating up the water. It's gonna have a bit of warm water for the yeast to do its trick. So I've got some briquettes, and that's where I'm going to be doing the bread. It's busy proving over there, but we shall see how it turns out. Hopefully it'll be fine. So this is the result of the bread. That's what's left of it, that we were making last night. It's very nice, actually. It turned out lovely. Cheese and onion. Very nice. Well, listen to the babblers babbling. Right, tonight I'm going to be making mochi. Just two potatoes, some flour, and one egg. Peel and boil the potatoes. Put, add the flour when they cool down, and the egg. Roll them up, so let's see how it goes. Right, I'm going to peel the potatoes first. Okay, I'm going to peel the potatoes, and then cut them up and put them in the boiling water. That a potato peeler has gone missing, so... This is going to do a job and a half. Right. Much easier with the potato peeler, but it's going okay. Right, chop them up. Frost potato. Alright, ah, there's this one. Look. This one's okay. I guess I'll have to get another one. Do I just cut around it? No. Yeah, okay, into the pot. And they have to boil away. Well, I cool. made ice. I'm taking ice out for the whiskey. Done. Pull them up, put them back. Right, so ice. It's hot. Need a lot of ice. Okay, potatoes are done. They're just gonna get drained and cooled. I'm gonna empty them under the sink that we have here. Right, they emptied. Now they're just going to cool off and then I can mash them. Right, so mashing the potato. Probably hmm? I've got a masher. There's one cup of potato. Tiny bit left, so. Two cups of flour. Two cups of all-purpose flour. Gonna wash my hands. Right, and one egg. Nice, 
Here's my long snake, my goodie. Right, so then you just cut them up. There's my notchy. All done. Camping notchy. Right. We're just going to add the notchy to the mince. Nicely. Right. Notchy and the potchy. We did have flames just now, now we've got smoke. We'll get some more flames just now. You can see some red at the bottom. Right, so there's our bra for tonight. We've got two corns, some sausages, chicken kebabs, and some rump steak kebabs as well. Should be good. The fire keeps going. I hope it'll keep going. Yeah, it's one of the little dirt roads on the Kruger that we're going down, down towards the river. So there on our afternoon drive are two elephants and further and some zebra and then further off to the right is a huge Eli. These look very small. But it's just the camera. And how are the birds on the floor there? Having a nice drink. Yeah, well, it's, you can hear it drinking from here. Now there's a big boy having a drink. Why at the water hole when you can go to the water reservoir and drink over from the top? Here he goes. Having a lovely drink. <laughs> you can actually <laughs> hear him drinking. The curry bastard. Lovely elephant right by the car. There's a tiny one around the back there somewhere. Let's see if we can see it. Can you see it? Mm -mm. I don't know where it's gone. There was a little one. Right, we're heading out another day in the park. Going to see what we can see today. Right, we have some buffalo. I'm looking to see what we're doing. And there's some in the bush here. Looking straight at us, snorting over.
Here we go. Some zebra and an impala. Huge nests in the tree. Zebra very quizzy this morning. Gone as far as I can. Here we go. Here's an Ellie at the same water hole as the zebras. Nice bum view. It's getting so still it looks like a, oh, it's moving its tail. This water hole has got solar panels so obviously they pump the water in when there's no rain. Big boy all on his own. There he goes off. It's mostly mud. He's having fun in. It's got two nests in it. Uh, there's some caravans coming behind us. There you go, the caravans now. Bye bye. So, this is the water hole where the windmill is. Middle flay, I suppose, because it's in the middle of the flay. So there's the windmill at Middle Flay. It's pumping water into the tank over there. And there's an old windmill here that's not working anymore as well. So there's some wildebeers. They are in the shade, you can't really see them that well. See if I can zoom up a bit. That's better. There they are. There's some more around the corner, and there's some little ones under the tree there. It's wandering off. Right, so there's on the side of the road a, a spider web. I don't know what kind of a spider it is, but it's quite an impressive web he's built there. He or she is built there. There's a couple of them around at the moment. There's a little one over there. Okay, so we're on a bridge on the Tava River. We can get out of our car as long as we stay in the demarcated areas. which is here, is a yellow line. I'm outside of it now, so I'm, that's where the sign is. Okay, so this is the Lataba River behind me. It's quite an impressive river, actually, on this side. And in 2000, when there was a flood here, the flood is about 400 meters up the road, the flood line. So it must have been pretty high. This is just the other side of the river behind us. So yeah, it's pretty impressive. There's a lot of birds flying around. You can see them. It's lovely to see some water in the river as well. There's a bird. I think it's a hardy dog down there on the rock. You can see all the swallows going in here under the under the bridge. Something has been walking across the sand. I don't know if it's a hippo. You can see the footprints. And here in the middle as well. Right, so there's a spider on the bridge. He's got a couple of insects in his web. Beautiful looking spider. I think it's a, is it a golden orb spider? So here's our car in the middle of the bridge. 
There's the yellow line. We're almost at the Taba camp. We're going to go up there and see what it's like. Cool. So there's a white line in the road here. You'll see it coming up. This is where the flood water got to in February 2000. I think it's 2000. Let me just have a look. This is, has the white line. Yeah, February 2000. So this road here has got a little bit washed away. We won't be able to go down it. It's down near the Latawa River. There we are, last view of the river. So we'll make a U-turn. Okay, so we're just arriving at the Latawa camp. Staying here, we're just gonna go and have a look and see. So here's the Taba Rest Camp. These are some of the chalets. We're going to go and look at the river, the Latawa River, which is just behind me at the moment. Well, now it's coming into view. There's the river. I believe there's an elephant there, so let's go and have a look. So there's a view of the Latawa River. Electric fence in front of me. There's an elephant over there. I don't know if you can see it. It's quite a long way off. Okay, so yes, this is the restaurant view, or the view from the restaurant rather, at Lataba. Place is looking a bit sad. The roof. Of the restaurant. But anyway. Right, there's some zebra. There's a smaller one over there. Mother, I think. And there's one hiding in a bush over there as well. So we haven't seen very many animals, but um, yeah, it's been good. Right, so we're at the Tropic of Capricorn in the Kruger Park. There's a demarcation here, and there's a line in the road to mark the Tropic of Capricorn as well. You can get out your vehicle on the other side. I'll show you the plaque that's there. There's a big rock here. And then again, there's the line in the road. There's a bit of water with some lilies in, some nice, I think they're white lilies, white or pink. Stretch us quite a long way down that way. But there's no animals and don't see very many birds. It's very hot today as well. It's about 36, 37 degrees, humid. Some water on the road. Babies. 
So there's a wildebeest, there's ostrich on the horizon. The first ostrich we've seen, I think. Yeah, it is. Good. And wildebeest. Right, so there's an elephant, I'm telling by the water, and there's one hiding in the bush over there. You can just see its ears and things. There are some more to the right, but we can't see them currently. A little bit of water there. Look, over there comes another one on the right. I don't know if you can see it coming through there. Wildebeest. Those are little beetle things around. I think they're getting bugged. Bonnet, eh? <clears throat> I don't know if you can see the bugs on the bonnet. All little blue bugs. Yeah, you can see them there. The birds are going crazy. Zebra. Lots of them, look. I think that's what's bugging the wildebeest. There's some zebra crossing the road in front. So there's the elephant, there's the wildebeest, another elephant over there. We're going to see if there's a water hole to the left here. We're going to see if we can go to the water hole. Zebra crossing the road. And these bugs are still bugging around. You can see them on the window. Yeah, hello, Zebby. Yeah, I don't know if we can see it, but around that water thing, tank. Going too fast. There's a whole lot of um, elephant. We're going to see if we can get close to the water tank. Right, so we've just come across this water hole. There's elephant, Egyptian geese, zebra, wildebeest. You can see the water hole coming along now. There's more elephant there. Zebra, there's more elephant out in the distance. Oh, they're rumbling. You can hear the Egyptian geese, goose. Elephant there. There's some zebra there, there's some more elephant coming. Hmm, geese are not very happy. More elephants walking up. Sounded like um, wild dogs somewhere. I could hear some sound like dogs barking. We'll see what comes up. These ones are still coming along. The one elephant there was really having a good shower. Probably now just finished. Other ones are coming along. Well, there's ones walking backwards. Look at that. 
don't know if he wants to chase them away or what he wants to do. Turn around now. Those three are still having a conflip. We came across this plain and it's got zebra and wildebeest, ostrich, elephant, Egyptian goose, a lot of birds. Wonderful. And thousands of little buggy things running around. Look at them all over the car. Right, there's an elephant, so there's a little one there, but it's behind the mother's front legs. Might see it just now. If it pops out. Let's see. There was another one just down across the road, but um, I don't know where it went to. Alright, there's the little one at the back. You can just see the trunk, the ears flapping. There we go. There it is. Yeah, there's a little one there. Lovely sighting this morning. Oh, there's one there. There's a big one in the road. Crossing the road. Ah, there's one crossing the road and there comes another one. Some other smaller ones coming as well. This is going next door to the forest. Oh, 
area. Yo, what a beautiful sighting. Another little one coming across the road. Sure. Wow. Just as soon as they come, wow. they're gone. There's a straggler. No, there's no straggler. No, it's not. There's more coming still. Yo. Big herd. Look up the front. Uh, look what's happening in the front here. Still they come. There's a river on the right hand side there, so they must be going to have a drink. Wow, oh, look at that. Tiny one there. Phew, more look. Cheers, that was fantastic. Some zebra on the road. There were two others that ran towards us and then went in the bush. Now oh, these two don't. There he's come out again. Now this lot doesn't know what to do. Maybe because I turned sideways in the road to do the filming. Hello. We have signal. Uh, there's a couple of elephants at a waterhole. I'll show you the waterhole shortly. Right. Okay, so there's the water hole over there. You can see there's three big boys. There's the one more. There's one at the water hole. There's another one over here. And more to the left is the other one. So we've seen quite a few elephants today. So here's an elephant pretty close by. Shining in for the sun from the water that he's just been in. Buffalo. Another elephant, and then on the right hand side, there's some more under a tree. Wandering off. Okay, so there's a wildebeest here, there's zebras in the background, and then there's a whole lot of elephant on the right hand side. So there's more elephants way back in the bush. Another looks like four or five I can count there and then to the right there's another one two three four and there's a big one at the water hole which we'll go and have a look at now okay so there's an elephant at the water hole there by the windmill as well 
well, X one more. And then over here, there's a whole lot of Egyptian geese, some zebra. On the other side of the road, um, there's a lot of zebra coming down. And we're going to wait and see if the other elephant come down as well. Sure. It's quite a sight, actually. Mm. Right out in the bush at the back there, there's four. On this side, there's another two in the bush. I think the one on the right's not very happy with the what new arrival. Zebra in the background are having a bit of a tussle. So there's zebra coming down as well to the water hole. Hmm. Those two are not happy. Another elephant arrived at the water hole. Or water tank, so there's three of them there now. Ryan, there's a buffalo. Not looking too happy with us, but anyway. Snorting. Left um, 10 days, so we're on our way to Shunguetsi, 61 kilometers up the H16. So, hopefully, we're going to have a good day and we'll see what Shunguetsi uh, campsite is like.